Hey, what's up guys? I'm Anthony with Videvo and I'm gonna give you a few more tips on how you can improve your filmmaking right at home. Now, I think it's just about every single day I see a new gadget come out that's supposed to improve your filmmaking, get you those crazy shots that you've always wanted and make your work look like it was produced in Hollywood. Whether it's a dolly, a new gimbal, or even a drone. So what I'm gonna do today is show you ways that I've incorporated some DIY techniques into my own personal projects and show you, you don't really need a large crew and you won't need the biggest, greatest, latest piece of gear to pull off these camera moves. Honestly, the easiest way to add some production value to your project is by adding some camera movement. And this is usually done by either a gimbal or a dolly, but sometimes we just don't have access to that and we don't have the crew necessary to man those things. So my quick solution is a skateboard. Anytime that I'm working on a project that I know I probably want to add some movement to, I pack a skateboard into my car. A skateboard is so common, you probably have someone on your crew who's able to ride one. And they're so cheap that you may also just have one sitting in your garage or a friend may have one just sitting in the back of their truck. It functions the same way as a dolly. It's got four wheels that can stay fairly stable and provides you basically unlimited track movement for whatever shot you're trying to accomplish. The problems you really run into are that you have to know someone or be able to ride a skateboard yourself. Now this can also be done with roller skates uh, or any other kind of movement where you're able to control the camera with your arms and control the other part with your legs. On a lot of my own shoots, what I do is I hop on the skateboard and I have a friend or a grip or someone else that's able to stabilize me and move me as I am able to focus on getting the shot and just staying on the skateboard. This helps quite a bit and is able to just be accomplished by two people. There have been many other projects where I am just a solo shooter and I am able to hop on the skateboard, ride around and get these really cool dolly or tracking shots that I wasn't able to accomplish just handheld or even with a gimbal. Another little tip is to keep a small piece of wood in your car for that shoot. Multiple times it saved me where we had too much gravel, we had to shoot in the grass, and I put down a small, maybe three foot piece of wood, and I was able to move back and forth on the skateboard on that, rather than putting the skateboard in the grass or the gravel where it would have been bumpy and ruined the shot. Another common situation is shooting scenes inside the interior of a car. This poses a few of its own challenges. You can't really control the lighting or the scene of where you're shooting. Especially if you're driving around town, the scenery might change from street to street, and you don't really have a lot of control over that. Next, you have to fit a bunch of people inside a car, whether it's a sound person, a camera person, and the people within the scene. Next, you don't really have a lot of space to work with. Either you gotta have mount the camera outside of the car shooting in, or you, as the camera person, have to shoot around the tight interior of the car itself. Now it may be hard to believe, but you can pull this off at a static location. And this solves all of the problems that we talked about prior. All that you would need is a projector and a projector screen. Essentially what we're doing is setting up the projector and the projector screen on the outside windows that we're shooting toward to mimic the outdoor location that we're driving through. Essentially, you're shooting into the projection screen and you would play either stock footage or footage you recorded yourself of the background scenery passing as if you were driving through it. If done well, this can actually pass for actual driving wherever that location is. But this is actually a real Hollywood technique that you're able to accomplish right at home. The thing I love most about this process is the control. One, I can control the lighting that's specifically hitting our subjects on screen. Second, we get nice clean audio where we don't have to worry about the road noise, the car noises and things of that sort. And lastly, I can choose my camera angles very specifically rather than working in a tight confined area and we're able to shoot outside the car in without having to worry about mounting the car and maybe having it fall off and ruining the whole shoot. A good tip for lighting the stationary kind of car movement is taking some lights and moving them back and forth across your subjects. This gives the illusion that the car is actually driving past lighting sources rather than in a stationary position. Lastly, I've always wanted to own a drone, but never really had the situation in which it made sense to buy one. So if you're ever in a pinch, you can do what I like to call camera on a stick. Essentially what you should do is take your biggest, beefiest kind of light stand you have and screw your camera in as if it was going onto a tripod plate. Now similarly, as you would do if you were extending a light on this light stand all the way up, you would do the same thing with the camera. Most light stands go about 10 feet tall, 
So you'll be getting a shot about the same height. Now, very carefully, what I want you to do is take that light stand and lift it up and walk around the scene that you're wanting to be filmed. Obviously, this is a little bit unsafe for the camera, so please proceed with caution. If you're worried about your light stand breaking or you don't have the biggest, beefiest light stand available, then I would avoid this completely. But if you have the opportunity to use a small mirrorless camera, a C stand, or just a nice beefy metal light stand, this could be a good option to replicate a drone shot. Now as a tip, I would use a pretty wide angle lens anywhere between a 16, 24 millimeter, just to ensure that your framing is good on what you're filming, because you're not gonna be able to monitor exactly what the camera is seeing. So after some stabilization in post and maybe some cropping and reframing, you should have a shot that closely resembles what a low flying drone would look like. You may not want to put your camera on a stick and put it up in the air, but I think just having the mentality of the DIY filmmaking and problem solving aspect is a good thing to add in your filmmaking techniques and hopefully you'll find your own unique way to incorporate DIY filmmaking in your own projects. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. I'm Anthony with Videvo. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Follow me on Instagram. Until next time, see you later.